Well, hello once again. I'm glad everyone decided to come back, or at least individually you came back. Thank you very much. I think we'll go ahead and kick off this video with a little uh, vacuum tube action. I've gone ahead and cleaned all the vacuum tubes with a, you know, a soft, damp rag, being careful around the, uh, the numbers on the sides of the tubes. Some of them are very faint as it is. So I went ahead and just labeled them with a label so I know what they are, okay? Just a just little old label machine I have. Come on now, zoom in on there. Nah, I don't want to do it too well. Anyway, there we go. All right, I put labels on the bottom of every one except for the, the metal uh, 6J5s. They have a big old thing that you can see with no problem. We are short three tubes. Uh, one of a couple of these tubes have some really loose bases. Here's one right here. You can you can see it's really loose, and I have to glue it. And this uh, 6F6, got to be careful with this. This baby is really loose. You can see it moving. See, it's terrible. So we're going to glue uh, some of those bases back on. I'm going to be using super glue to do that. I like generally to use super glue for glass, but, you know, I couldn't find any in town anymore. I don't know what's happened. They don't sell it. I went online. They want $10 a tube. Forget that. You know, I'd rather use the money to buy a tube, and I'll just go ahead and put the super glue around the base here. The reason I wanted the glass uh, super glue or super glue for glass was because it dries clear. This uh, standard old Ute, uh, super glue gel you know, has a tendency to dry a little bit milky, but you know, for $10 savings, I think I'm willing to go ahead and suck up on that. No problem. Now we do have another tube that the grid cap <coughs> was completely missing from it, and it, it's still on the chassis. It's in the grid cap connector, and just the wires hang out, and I was going to go ahead and do a repair on that. But if you look at the wire, you know, you push on the wire, and you can see that wire. See that wire moving inside that tube? Let's see if I can get down here a little closer and get a little focus in there. I don't know if I you might be able to make it move and see it moving there. I'm pushing on the top. Well, that wire is not supposed to move. If that glass was securely fastened around that wire, that tube would not. See, I can even move it back and forth with my finger. So that tube has lost its vacuum. That tube is no good. That's a 6A8. So that one will be going in the trash. The rest, I will repair the bases and maybe, I don't know, maybe if I get, get the time, I'll run them across the, a couple of them across the tube checker at the end of this video. If not, we'll run them across the tube checker next time. One more thing about these uh, tubes, <clears throat> these loose tube bases. Now, the, the loose tube base is like a loose grid cap. You know, there, there's no such thing as a little bit loose. They're either loose or they're secure. There's no in-between. Now, right here, you'll notice that right where the tube has been loosened up all these years, a lot of dust is, and, and dirt have accumulated down in that area right there. The best thing to do is just take, take a little paintbrush, dry, and just kind of give it a good cleaning all the way around before you apply whatever glue it is you're going to use. You can use just about anything. You can use epoxy. It doesn't matter. It's your choice. You know, I happen to like super glue because it's quick and easy and the price is, is not too expensive. Let's turn our attention to the uh, 8 and 10 microfarad electrolytic capacitors that I have to install. <clears throat> now right here, I've got an 8, and over here is an 8 and a 10, if you'll recall. And the positive end of the 10 microfarad connects to ground. Now we're going to be mounting all three of these on terminal strips. Now they may not all go on the same strip, I think what I'm going to do is uh, use a separate strip for this 8 microfarad here and then mount these two on this strip right here, which means that the positive end of the 10 microfarad will be connected to right here, which is ground, okay? That right there will be ground. It'll be fastened to the chassis. So the positive end of 86A will go there. And then I'll probably hook the uh, negative end over here or over here. I'm not sure where. And then the negative end of the other, which is 86, electrolytic, will come down and connect to the negative end wherever I go, you know, wherever I've hooked it, either to here and here. And once we get those two hooked up, then the positive end 
uh, this one right here, this 86, will come up here and hook to the field coil right there. It'll hook between the choke and the field coil. And that should take care of that entire string with the exception of right here. One end of the candome resistor that has all those connections on it will connect to uh, the negative. It'll connect between the two negatives. And also the center tap of the secondary larger winding will also come, it all comes together in that one little space, you know, between the two negatives of the electrolytic capacitors. Now, it may seem a little bit complicated, but it's really simple. Ground to positive to negative to negative to positive. Up to the field coil and over to the candle resistor and over to the uh, negative of the 8 microfarad, which is already will be connected to the uh, center tap of the secondary and larger winding. Now, if all of that is hooked correctly, now, if this little connection right here is not hooked up connect, uh, correctly, well, you know what we got to do? Yeah, of course you do. We have to hook it up correctly. So we'll go through this step by step as I connect them to this uh, terminal strip. It's not going to be that hard, believe me. I have mounted uh, the capacitors on the terminal strip. And what I decided to do to save terminal strips, I went ahead and mounted this other uh, capacitor also. So we have these two electrolytics mounted and this third one. And in, you know, in order to make things simple, now this is an 8, this is an 8, and this is a 10 microfarad. What I decided to do when I placed my order was forget the 8 and 10, just go with all 10s. So that makes things easier. I don't have to worry about, oh, gee, did I hook it up to the 10 or the 8? Make them all 10, they'll work fine. So here it is mounted on the, uh, the circuit board. I've got two here and one in the back on the terminal strip. And when I'm all done, this terminal strip, once I get it, will go over here like so and be mounted right there. It'll be mounted right there like that. And I'll make sure all the capacitors are clear of everything. This big old giant capacitor will be coming out of here so we'll have a little more room to work with. And we'll get it about like that, you know, where it kind of looks halfway decent. Okay, anyway, let me show you how we did it. I'm going to go over this one more time, and I know it's going to be boring for the old timers, but, you know, that's okay. Now, like I said, these videos are not for the old timers and know how to do these things, you know, other than maybe a refresher or you want to catch me in a mistake or something, <laughs> which is usually the case. This is, these videos are for the folks that don't know how to do it. So how did I hook up this mess on this circuit board per the schematic. Well, we'll go over it one more time. You'll remember that the positive of this uh, uh, electrolyte goes to ground. I have done that right there. The positive side of this capacitor here is soldered right there to that center tab. This is going to be the ground because it's going to be bolted to the chassis. So the positive was soldered there. The negative I soldered to the tab next to it, okay? Now, the negative is here, and it goes up and it connects to the negative of the second electrolytic capacitor. Now that second electrolytic capacitor is this one right there on the other side. Let me get a pencil here. I notice it's kind of hard, but you'll notice that the, uh, the negative end right here of this capacitor is soldered to the same place as the other one that comes through the bottom down there, okay? So the negative on this one is connected to the negative on that one. Now that'll be the two of the three capacitors. Now we come over here and we find we have another negative from this capacitor that comes over and joins the negative of the other two. Down, across, the or they're all tied together. All three of these negatives are tied together, okay? There is the other negative right there coming from this capacitor. Now I used a two axial capacitors and one radial. By axial, the I mean the uh, leads come out at the center of each end, okay, like an axle on a car. This one here on top is what they call radial. It has two leads coming out of both end, out of one end, okay. They call them radial, axial, radial, axial. Anyway, we now have the negatives all tied together right here 
on this tab right here I ran a jumper wire I ran actually what I did was I ran the lead through brought it over and ran it through the hole here and soldered it all together so we have all three negatives together now all we have to do is go ahead and uh, bring the wires in from the various places and connect them up to the to the soldering tabs that I left unused on the top pretty neat huh it's now mounted into the chassis and in order to make things easier so I know where you know what wire I've run where I'm gonna go ahead and label them now the one that has the positive connected to ground that is 86 a so that's this one in the center we're just gonna write 86 a right here 86 a okay this one over here is the one kind of off to the side that's 88 so let's make that 88 And this other one at the top here is 86. So we'll make that 86. We'll just write 86 in there. And now there won't be any confusion about what's going on when I uh, go ahead and start hooking up wires. There's supposed to be a wire that comes from this candle resistor. This candle resistor has several connections on it. And then there's a wire at the end. And that wire is connected to both negatives of the original electrolytic capacitors and there's also a wire that runs uh, over here it runs over to the center tap on the second area of the power transformer and it also runs down and over and up to one side of the audio output transformer uh, the uh, I guess this is actually an interstage or or output audio transformer and it's got two actually this is actually your audio output transformer on your speaker and this is a uh, this is like a an interstage audio output transformer so you actually have two of them okay so anyway one of the wires comes around and runs up to one side of that so all this crap that I just mentioned also you know it all comes together right here all right so let's follow the wire off of the uh, one off of the uh, can dome resistor right here that has all the connections on it. Now, all the connections are one end, and then this other end has a bunch of wires coming into it. One wire comes across, and sure enough, it connects right here to the negative on this electrolytic, that, this original electrolytic. And then you'll see a jumper wire right here that jumpers from this electrolytic over to this electrolytic, which ties the two negatives together. So I'm going to have to disconnect that wire right there and hook it to the negative uh, connection right here on our terminal board and that'll fix that'll take care of those two being uh, connected to this one wire now the other wires I really don't have to do anything from because this is the center tab uh, going into the power transformer that one right there this this little green thing comes around goes right into the power transformer it's actually green and white so that's your center tap off your power transformer secondary and then the other wire goes runs up runs up runs up and it connects right into here to one side of the audio uh, interstage audio uh, output transformer which is this is one side up here this brown mess here and then here's the other so the only thing I have to do so far is disconnect the wire right here where it connects on to that uh, electrolytic there and solder it here and all that wiring is still in place it's already in place for me piece of cake on that one All right, here it is again. By moving that one wire, I showed you, it takes care of everything you see here in green. Okay? Everything in green is automatically taken care of by moving one wire. The next thing we have to do is take the positive lead of number 88, and we have to take it up and hook it to the choke, one side of the choke. And also at that same point where this thing connects to the choke there should be a wire that goes back into a winding on the power transformer so it should go into the the transformer now I've already done it here is number 88 capacitor number 88 and uh, see that insulated lead right there I put some of that Teflon let me move this back a little bit maybe you'll see a little better I put a little Teflon uh, coat out uh, wire uh, you know Teflon insulation on that and then I ran it up here to this choke connector right there 
and I soldered it in. And from that choke connector, there is indeed a wire running over going into the power transformer. So 88 is now hooked in, negative and positive, into the circuit. I'll tell you what, you know, I should be doing this hanging by my feet in a completely dark room with my hands tied behind my back. That's how easy this is. All right, let's color in our old uh, schematic again to show what we have done. We have gone from the positive up to the one side of the choke. And then, of course, the wire leading into the power transformer. Okay, that's where we're at right now. We're just trucking right along here. Let's take a look at the other one now. What we're going to do, here's 86, the positive side of 86. We're going to run a wire up to the choke. We're going to run a wire up to the other side of the choke. We just ran this one up here. Now we're going to run a wire up from the from 86 to the other side of that choke connector. Now, by the way, that choke is that brown thing you see right there sticking down through the chassis. It's got two connections on it. All right, we've already connected it to this side, so the other side, we have to run a wire from the positive side of 86. Now, 86, as you can see, I've got it labeled as the one back here. 86 is connected here, the positive side. So we're just going to run a wire from here up to here, the other side of the choke. And then we're going to get rid of this crappy wire. Matter of fact, I'm in a chop-chop mood. I'll tell you what, I'm just going to go ahead. I'm going to cut that baby right now. Just cut it out of there. Yeah, oh, I like doing stuff like that. I went to the doctor the other day, and he was cutting on me, so this is my little revenge here. Okay, we're going to get rid of that stub that's left, and we're going to run a wire from the positive up to it. The next wire that needs to be hooked up is the wire from the positive of 86 up to the, the field coil. Now, I've already connected that one. I'll show you where it's at. It was originally connected over here, and you can see where I cut the wire. Right there, and that's the stub sticking out. And then I soldered. This is the wire going out to that field coil right there. Okay, it runs all the way out through the cable bundle out to the speaker in the field coil. I just went ahead and soldered it right there. I could have soldered it down here to the positive of 86. This is 86, remember? I could have soldered it right there, but I just said to heck with it. It was easier and quicker to solder it right there. Where it connects to the where the positive of 86 connects to the uh, choke, same same electrical point, so it doesn't matter whether I solder it there or there. It was quicker and faster and easier to do it right there. Okay, see it down in there, coming around right down into there. Then that white wire runs down to the positive of 86. All right, let's check out these two resistors that I have removed from the last uh, from the last electrolytic down there. They were attached to that red lead or that red connector. One is supposed to be 25,000. The other is supposed to be 15,000. So let's go ahead and connect this up here. Let's check the 25,000 first and see what we get. Since they're out of the circuit, I figured I'd go ahead and check them. I don't really like reusing dog bones. You know, they're cool and they're neat and, you know, they, they have certain nostalgia to them, but they're junk. And I don't want junk in the radios I restore because, you know, I give these radios away. And I don't want the next guy to have his, you know, all of a sudden smoke's coming out from the bottom of it because of a stupid old, look at that, it's already been pretty well burned. Look at that. You know, I just don't want him to think I'm, you know, I'm not guys you give him a radio and start smoking in his house. He'd probably never talk to me again. <laughs> I wouldn't blame him. Best to put new parts in radios you're going to give away. If you're keeping them yourself, that's one thing. You know, if it starts to smoke and everything, you know what to do. You shut it down, you change out the resistor, you're good to go. Someone else who knows nothing about these radios, they just freak them out. So I don't want that to happen to the people I give radios to. So let's go ahead and test it and see what it is. Supposed to be 25,000. Let's see what we got. I'm on the uh, 200,000 scale here. It's supposed to be 25,000. It's reading 35,000. That's quite a ways out, so that's got to be changed. This one right here is supposed to be 15,000. And it's also been burned pretty bad, too. See where the paint's burned off the center right there? Let me get the light over there. It's kind of blackish in the middle here. These, these resistors got pretty hot at one time. Let's try the new one. Let me try. He's supposed to be fifteen thousand. 
51,000. All right, they got to go. Okay, they got to go. Now, what that tells me is before I turn this radio on, I better go through and change out, check and change out every one of these resistors. They, that's pretty far out, both of them. That's, that's too far out to ignore. I'm sure the rest of them are going to be about the same way. So the next time you see this radio, I should have all of the resistors that I can get to changed out like these with these here you know this one here and this one here and this one up here and here's another one it's going to take a little work all right i was going to end the video with this but i decided to show the newbies out there well, i call them newbies and you know that's an affectionate term as far as i'm concerned you know it's guys that were first starting out or who or who are a little weak at following circuits, following uh, wires inside a chassis. And I'm going to show you uh, something that you're going to run into. So let me get it set up. See that yellow contact up there in that round brown circle? There's a wire connected to it. Little round yellow thing, okay? That's going to be the subject of our next little segment here. Keep in mind that little yellow spot I showed you on that uh, the bottom of that you know filter can, which is on the top of the radio. Let me go ahead and I'll just go ahead and show you what that filter can looks like, so you know what we're talking about. It is that little short round one right here. Okay, this thing has a one, two, and a three microfarad capacitor in it. The yellow one. I just showed you as the contact is down at the bottom where it sticks through the bottom of the chassis. It is the three microfarad, okay? And that's what we were talking about. Now we come back over here and we see that we have everything connected on or over on this side to the various uh, electrolytic capacitors, okay? We have it connected to 86 and 88 and 86A up to the field coil. Now the other side of the field coil, which runs out this cable bundle right here, there is a blue and white wire, or it used to be a blue and white wire, it's kind of difficult to discern right now, but I figured it out. You come out of the other side, of the, you come in one side, you come out of the other side of the field coil, and it goes over and it connects to that yellow spot I showed you on the bottom of that can, up in there, and that's the three microfarad capacitor. So let's see if we can follow it out. It's a little short wire on the schematic. And just before you get to that 3 microfarad, we have a 5600 ohm resistor right here. The blue and white wire comes in from the uh, four wire bundle going out to the uh, speaker. And all have been accounted for. I marked them with these, these uh, plastic wire ties. I put a white one, a green one, and a green and white. The one that was left it's the blue and white, although you can't make out blue and white on it anymore, and I didn't have a blue wire tie to put on there. Anyway, you follow that blue and white one down there, what used to be blue and white, you follow it down and you find out that it connects to one side of that candle resistor back there. Now, coming off that terminal is one other wire. There's just two wires there, one coming down from the speaker bundle or the uh, field coil, and one leaving and going back up through here, going back up through here. Here's where the new guys kind of get into trouble. They see this uh, wire coming coming in from the speaker through that bundle, and they see it coming over and connecting to one side of that 5600 ohm cand ohm resistor. It's connected right there. Now it should be a short hop, just a little short hop over to that three microfarad electrolytic capacitor. But if you'll notice, <laughs> it, it came in down here, but that three electrolytic, three microfarad electrolytic capacitor, that red dot is way up in there. Way up in there. You saw it. So holy mackerel, how did we get, how do we go from here up to here? Well, this is where you, you got to turn into a bloodhound. You got to be a bloodhound about this. Now we can trace this wire starting at the bottom of the uh, capacitor and we can trace it all the way down to that connection on that candle resistor back there to this wire right here, see, that wire right there, that black and white striped. Or we can go from this end and go the other way. It doesn't matter, you know, don't get hooked, don't get, uh, you know, locked into one way of doing something. 
Let's start from here. I'll tell you what, let's just start from down here. We need to get over here. And this is where folks run into a lot of problems. Okay, we, we grab a hold of our little wire and we kind of wiggle it. You can see it moving. It's right here. It's this one right here. Then it goes up here. It goes up here to want to the center point. You got three connectors there, left, right, and one in the center. It is soldered to the center one. Now this is the one of that interstage uh, audio output transfer I was talking about, and that's this one right here. So let's come across and look at it. We we came from here. We are connected right there to that 5600 candom resistor. Then it goes up all the way across and comes down and it goes to the center. That's cool. We just we just checked that. We just found that center. So that part is good. Okay. But we still got to get to that three microfarad electrolytic. All right. Let's keep going. Let's see if there's another wire coming off that off that middle terminal. Yes, there is. It's right here. It's this one right here. See it wiggling? This one right here. Okay, this one comes up goes up, goes up, and it goes to one of these uh, Bakelite blocks. Well, there's no Bakelite block here. There's nothing here that says anything about a Bakelite block. It just comes over and it's supposed to go straight to the straight to the uh, positive side of that capacitor. There's no Bakelite blocks shown in here. What's going on here? Well, at this point, most people are really confused. They don't know what to do. They say, man, this is, this is, this is not the way it's supposed to be. Well, yes it is, and I'll tell you why. This Bakelite block used this terminal and this terminal, but it did not use this terminal. So this terminal became a junction point, this one and this one. It was an empty, uh, it was an empty solder point. So they just soldered this wire right to one side of it and then picked up on the other side with another wire. You see what I'm talking about? You gotta be a bloodhound. Now we come around and we look at this wire. And where does this stupid wire go? Now this wire here, this wire here comes across to right here, to another terminal. It hooks right here. It's soldered to that terminal. Holy mackerel, we've gone from here to here to here to here over to here. Right here, there it is, connected right in there. Right, right on that terminal strip, right there. Now there's another wire somebody's messed with at one time, and you can tell by how bad the soldering is. Now let's follow this one down, see where it goes. It goes down inside here, over to, let me see if I wiggle in the right wire. Yep, I'm wiggling the white wire, the white one. And that one goes down in there to the yellow connector. Son of a gun. All right? The yellow connector. That wire right there you see, right there connected to the yellow connector, that black and white striped wire. Okay? That black and white striped wire is this one right here. You just saw a hop skip and jump through the radio to get you know all that wire was required to go from right here on that candom resistor back there, all that wire, the way they wired it, was required just to make that little tiny, uh, you know, connection between there. You gotta be a bloodhound. Don't give up real easy. Just because something doesn't look right, you have to use a lot of common sense. I could see that there was nothing soldered here. It, the, the inside, the capacitors inside this block are soldered to this one and this one. There's nothing coming out of that hole right there. So this was a blank set of terminals, and they just decided to use them. And here was another little board they put in there. You know, it's kind of silly sometimes, but it's the way it has to be. It's the way it has to be. They could have, in my mind, they could have connected right here with a single wire and then just ran the thing all the way over and right on down into that little three microfarad capacitor. But they chose to do it piece by piece by piece by piece. Don't be intimidated by this stuff. Don't let it fool you. Just because you see a short wire on a schematic does not mean that there's a short wire in the radio. <laughs> Everybody got that? I hope so. One other thing that needs to be put in still is this uh, 0.25 microfarad capacitor. Remember that big old wax capacitor we took out? It has to go in between the, the positives of the uh, of uh, 
part 88 and 86, these two electrolytics. Or across the, you know, the choke, however you want to, however you want to see it in there. It's either across the positives or across the choke. <laughs> and the one we'll put in will be this, it'll be right here. I'll, I'm not exactly certain how I'm going to do it yet. Probably going to stick it down behind here somehow and just solder it in across that choke, you know, on both sides. We'll figure that out. All right, let's wrap this. Let's wrap this video up. This has been too long, far too long. I'm going to try to cut it down when I edit it a little bit and still get the point across. Next time, uh, like I said, we hope to have all these resistors changed out. We will do the second terminal strip, which is this one here, which will take the place of all three capacitors in that can. I'll probably mount it, I don't know, over here someplace. I don't know. I'll figure out some place to mount it. Maybe right here. I got I got plenty of room here. Once I get these two resistors out, I'll have even more room. I might even mount it over here. I don't know. I'll worry about it when the time comes. Thanks for sticking with me on this. Uh, I don't know. Maybe two more videos. We'll have this thing where we can power it up. I sure hope so. Till next time, this is John.